Hi guys, if you're new here, I'm Donica, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the three short horror stories that I recently read. All three of these little novellas are so drastically different, and I think they kind of show how broad ranging the horror genre is. There are so many ways to elicit fear in someone, and I think if you read a lot of horror, you can relate to me in my search for what scares me. Every time I pick up a horror book, I'm still searching for that one thing that will always scare me. The first short story I'm talking about is God's Leftovers by Grant Wemeck. I found this on a new release horror list and I saw that if you purchased from Grant's website, for just a couple more dollars, you could get this signed copy. So how cool is that? This ended up being about $12 and this is the only physical short story I have that I'm gonna be talking about. This was released in August of this year. I saw it compared to The Hills Have Eyes. Now there are a handful of movies that if anything is compared to those movies I'm gonna pick it up it's almost an instant buy The Hills Have Eyes being one this short story is actually splatterpunk The Hills Have Eyes Hostel these movies that I grew up loving and really looking for that gore and that violence which can be described as torture porn splatterpunk falls into that category it is really hyper intensive horror with no limits so I saw it described as some horror works on the power of suggestion. The dread and the fear you feel might be because of what is not said or what is implied, but with Splatterpunk, it's laid bare. Gore violence and in great detail in God's Leftovers we're actually in the Valley of Fire State Park in Nevada. We're following a few characters. We have a religious man, we have a couple, we have a cameraman and a rapper. They're shooting his music video. They're all in the Valley of Fire for one reason or another and they all get stranded there for one reason or another. They end up all searching for help. In the middle of the desert they find this group who are all meditating. They're actually a group called The Collective. So I ended up giving this about a three star. The things I liked about this were the writing. It was solid writing, great editing. I can only imagine that there were only a handful of people, mainly the author, working behind the scenes to get this out to us. And it's done so well. I mean, the cover, everything about this was done so well. And also the base story, I think the ending ended to finalized for this to be a prequel, but the base story was really good as well. The collective was awesome, whereas The Hills Have Eyes are an inbred family. The collective is more of this cult. The reason that this didn't get four or five stars is because it was just too short. This actually ends up being around 50 pages, so it is very short. I think if you're an author and the only problem a reader had is that it was too short, they wanted more, that's not too bad. I was just left feeling like if we had spent more time, even maybe 50 more pages, really getting to know the collective, the ending would have packed more of a punch and I just would have ended up feeling more satisfied with the story. If a book is labeled splatterpunk, I feel like you should know just going in, there's gonna be violence of all natures, so just a fair warning, this is a short story, but even just straight from the prologue, you're getting a lot of physical and sexual violence, animal violence, it's all here. So if you're always looking for that really graphic and gory, disturbing story, this might be good for you. Just know you're probably gonna be left wanting more. I was looking for something disturbing, and he delivered. So the next short story I read was called A Short Stay in Hell. I have seen this in the subreddit Horror Lit. There's always a lot of really great recommendations in there for all kinds of horror. Whatever you're looking for, someone has asked and someone has gave suggestions. So this was like a short story I kept seeing pop up and A Short Stay in Hell, just based on that title alone, I went into it not knowing what the heck to expect, but not this. This is horror that will throw you into like an existential crisis. <laughs> it's not monsters. It's not a ghost story. It's not a haunted house. It's the fear of what comes next, the fear of eternity. Even, you know, with me being a Christian, we have a baseline of there's a hell. It kind of looks like this probably. There's a heaven probably looks like this. But even thinking about going to heaven for eternity and trying to grasp what that means 
for all of time, forever. I feel like doing anything for the rest of eternity, no matter how wonderful it may be, that's still scary. There's no end. Terrifying. So that's the kind of horror we're finding here. We're following our main character, Soren. He's a loving husband and father, and after dying, finds himself in hell. As a devout Mormon for his entire life, he's surprised to find that the one true religion is actually Zoroastrianism. So in hell, a worker who works for the god Ahura Mazda informs him that there are variations of hell. None of them involve the fire and brimstone some of us may be expecting. Hell is there to promote growth. Once you've reached the level of growth that they want, you will go to heaven and the heaven is more glorious than you could ever imagine. The worker informs him his hell he will be going to is based on the short story The Library of Babel by Jorge Luis Borges. So as an avid reader, going to hell and it being a library, I'm like, okay, could be worse, could be a lot worse, until you realize that in this library you will find all the books that can be possibly written. Note the wording on that. Not all the books that have ever or will ever be written, but can be written. You can find books that are just all the letter A. Then the next book is all the letter A with one B. Then you throw in symbols, numbers. This library ends up being filled with mostly gibberish. In order to leave this hell, Soren must find the book that describes his life from start to finish. Now, as the reader, I'm thinking, okay, how bad could this be? Which is kind of how Soren feels when he then wakes up after being transported to this library. And there's actually other people there with him, little groups all around the library. Out of all of these stories, this one felt most complete. This one in 100 pages took me on a journey. I absolutely loved this. Whenever I read a book that's 400, 500, 600 pages, this is why sometimes I rate them harshly because I'm just thinking, I read all of that for such a unsatisfying story. Whereas this in a hundred pages made me feel all the feels and made me feel like I had traveled through time and space hundreds of years. So you're following Soren when he has first got to hell, his mentality, what him and the little group he's with, how they plan on tackling, finding each of their books. Then you flash forward to a year later, what's their mentality? How have the dynamics changed? I love this story because I feel like we really start off in Soren's head and you might have the same kind of thoughts that he does about how to tackle this and how hard could this be? But as we continue reading this story, and as we're faced with how difficult this task really is, Soren really understanding how long he might have to be in this library, it's just terrifying. What starts off as a story that is kind of like, hey, compared to the hell that I imagined, being tortured for all eternity by the freaking Hellraiser people, this isn't so bad. There is violence in this. There is humor. Like there's one time I laughed out loud because it just the situation was so dire. You can't help but just find a little humor in the situation that Soren is in. Stephen Peck really does help you grasp what eternity means. And that's what's the scary part, because none of us can say with absolute certainty what comes next. I did give that five stars. I absolutely loved it. I will say, get through the prologue on that. The writing evens out after the prologue. There's going to be a lot of things going on. You're going to be confused. I think you'll really appreciate the prologue a lot more once you're done. Come back and read the prologue again. And the final book I'm going to talk about is Ghost 19 by Simone St. James. Here we have a classic ghost story. Simone St. James is an author that I recommend to pretty much anyone, especially those of you who don't really like too scary of stories. Maybe you're just dipping your toes into horror. At least for me, I don't ever find myself too terrified by her stories, but they creep me out just enough to keep me interested. Ghost 19 is actually not being released as a physical copy. So for right now, only the audiobook is available. And I believe in January, the ebook comes out. The audiobook is two hours and 51 minutes. And I gave this a solid four and a half stars. It was bite-sized Simone St. James. If you're a fan of her and you like her writing, I do not think you'll be disappointed in this story. And if you're new to her, I think this is a great start to 
get into her work. So this short story is set in 1959. Our main character's name is Jeanette Cox. So she was a Broadway actress who had kind of a mental breakdown, but mind you, this is the 1950s. Women really can't express too much emotion. You gotta take care of the kids, the house, while also looking the part of a perfect, dutiful wife every single day. All that on her shoulders, and yet we can't be a little stressed without it being a nervous breakdown. <laughs> she is admitted to a hospital, and when she's released, the doctor tells her no stimulants of any kind. Alcohol, cigarettes, even television. And he also recommends that she moves from the bustling city to maybe a small neighborhood so she moves to Merrittville New York so in her new little house with nothing to do she realizes that from her back window she can kind of get this panoramic view of her neighbors she moves her couch to sit right in front of this window and just watches her neighbors she doesn't really know any of them so she gives them their own names and she begins learning their habits the ins and outs of their lives not long after moving into this little house she begins to hear noises at night and strange sightings of someone in the window outside of her house. And this coupled with the fact that she now has a really intense fear of leaving the house. She's developing a severe case of agoraphobia. Jeanette is a sassy main character, a strong main character. She's actually probably my favorite character that I've read so far with Simone St. James. For being the 1950s, she knows what's expected of her and she doesn't care. <laughs> so she feels like she's going crazy, but she's also kind of trusting her instinct and realizing that maybe there's more at play here than what she can see. I realized after reading this that one thing that will scare me no matter what is someone looking into a window at night in the book. <laughs> no matter what, no matter daytime or nighttime, if I'm reading that, I'm immediately scared. Don't be looking into my window at night, please. That is so scary. The only thing that I will say is the end, when it wrapped up, I feel like it was kind of one of those endings where the main character kind of has this dialogue where everything is explained to you instead of shown. So any loose ends are tied up with Jeanette and this other main character kind of discussing it out. Everything's revealed in that discussion, which I feel like each of these short stories kind of had one of those endings. Like you can only ever have with short stories. One, you're left with an ending that was good, but maybe the story wasn't fleshed out. And then you have my second short story, A Short Stay in Hell, where wrapped up great, you know, these rare little gems where I felt like I had enough of everything. Or the third version, the ending is good, but they're trying to wrap it up fast and neat. So the characters kind of have this conversation that kind of wraps everything up for you, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I got a little something for everyone in those reads. There's still a couple of weeks in October, plenty of time to throw these into your October TBR. If you do end up reading any of these, let me know what you think down below. Y'all take care and I will see y'all in my next video.